something. Something I can help with, or you just want to talk? Brynjolf, the time has come to decide Mercer's fate. Until a new guildmaster is chosen, the decision falls to you. Aye, lass. But I've come to a decision. Mercer Frey tried to kill both of you. He betrayed the guild, murdered Gallus, and made us question our future. He needs to die. We have to be very careful, Brynjolf. Mercer is a nightingale, an agent of Nocturnal. And it's all true. Everything I heard in the stories. The Nightingales, their allegiance to Nocturnal, and the Twilight Sepulchre. Yes. That's why we need to prepare ourselves and meet Mercer on equal footing. Just outside of Riften, beyond the southeast gate is a small path cut up the mountainside. At the end of that path is a clearing, and an old standing stone. I'd ask you both to meet me there. I have some preparations of my own. I'm preparing to leave I'll for the standing stone. stone. What is it? I have some preparations of my own to make. I'll meet you at the stone. you're here. This is the headquarters of the Nightingales, cut into the mountainside by the first of our kind. We've come to seek the edge we need to defeat Mercer Frey. If you'll follow me, I'll try to explain on the way. She's the mistress of night and darkness and the patron of every thief in Tamriel. Nocturnal isn't one for worship and reverence. There are no priests and no sermons, no services, 
and no arms. She influences our luck, and in return, demands payment. You're closer to understanding than you realize. The only difference is she doesn't demand payment in the traditional sense, and sometimes the cost can be quite high. Whether you know it or not, Nocturnal dictates how well we perform as rogues. Again, you have to think differently. Haven't you ever noticed how our luck behaves? Like a novice picking an impossible lock, or a blind man suddenly turning to face you as you reach for his pocket. It's through these subtle means that Nocturnal influences us. Nocturnal's whim is the greatest mystery to everyone. There have been volumes written on the subject. Does she exact payment when we die? When we suffer, does she revel in our misery? No one knows. The return certainly seems worth the risk, though. Gallus, Mercer Frey and I were once members of what's known as the Nightingale Trinity. The Trinity disbanded 25 years ago when Mercer Frey betrayed us by slaying Gallus and dumping his body in the ruins of Snowvale Sanctum. Indirectly. The Trinity is usually selected from the ranks of the Guild, although its existence is a closely guarded secret. The Nightingales protect the Temple of Nocturnal, a place known as the Twilight Sepulchre. It's my hope that you will, yes. This way, please. He's just ahead. Please, keep following. He's just ahead. Please, keep following. So this is Nightingale Hall. I heard about this place when I joined the guild, but I never believed it existed. The assumption that the Nightingale had just had been preceded within the guild on purpose. It helped divert attention from our true nature. What's wrong with me? I can almost hear you growl far I'm trying to understand why you feel that. I'm no priest, and I'm certainly not religious. Why pick me? This isn't about religion. This is Nightingale Hall. You're the first of the uninitiated to set foot inside in over a century. Now, if you'll both proceed to the armory to don your Nightingale armor, we can begin the oath. This is enough to make your head spin, eh? Ready for the oath. I think we should trust the lass and take the deal. Okay, lass, we've got these get ups. Now what? Oh, there, lass. I appreciate. 
appreciate the armor, but becoming a Nightingale, that was never discussed. To hold any hope of defeating Mercer, we must have Nocturnal at our backs. If she's to accept you as one of her own, an arrangement must be struck. What sort of arrangement? I need to know the terms. The terms are quite simple, Brynjolf. Nocturnal will allow you to become a Nightingale and use your abilities for whatever you wish. And in return, both in life and in death, you must serve as a guardian of the Twilight Sepulchre. Aye, there's always a catch. But at this point, I suppose there isn't much to lose. If it means the end of Mercer Frey, you can count me in. What about you? Are you ready to transact the oath with Nocturnal? By transacting the oath with Nocturnal, you're entering into a business deal. You'll be provided all of the power and knowledge befitting a Nightingale. You're free to use those powers as you see fit, to further your own goals, or the goals of the Thieves' Guild. In return, You'll be required to defend the Twilight Sepulchre and everything within when the need arises. More importantly, upon your death, your spirit will be bound to the Twilight Sepulchre as one of its guardians. Once the oath has been struck, the terms are binding. Knowing this, are you ready to undergo the ceremony? Good. After I open the gate, Please stand on the Western Circle. We'll speak when the oath is complete. Time's wasting, and Mercer's still out there. Let's get this show on the road. Upon you, Lady Nocturnal, Queen of Merc, and Empress of Shadow, hear my voice. Ah, Carlia. I was wondering when I'd hear from you again. Lose something, did we? My lady, I've come before you to throw myself upon your mercy and to accept responsibility for my failure. You're already mine, Carlia. Your terms were struck long ago. What could you possibly offer me now? I have two others that wish to transact the oath. To serve you both in life and in death. You surprise me, Caroline. This offer is definitely weighted in my favor. My appetite for Mercer's demise exceeds my craving for wealth and grace. Revenge. How interesting. Very well. The conditions are acceptable. You may proceed. Lady Nocturne, we accept your terms. We dedicate ourselves to you as both your Avengers and your Sentinels. We will honor our agreement in this life and the next until the conditions have been met. Very well. I name your initiates Nightingale. And I restore your status to the same, Carlyle. And in the future, I'd suggest you refrain from disappointing me again. Now that you've transacted the oath, it's time to reveal the final piece of the puzzle to you. Mercer's true crime. Mercer was able to unlock the guild's vault without two keys because of what he stole from the Twilight Sepulchre. The skeleton key. By doing this, he's compromised our ties to Nocturnal, and in essence, caused our luck to run dry. Well, yes. But the key isn't only restricted to physical barriers. 
All of us possess untapped abilities, the potential to wield great power securely sealed within our minds. Once you realize the key can access these traits, potential becomes limitless. Good. Then you understand why this is about more than just Mercer's lust for power. If the key isn't returned to its lock in the Twilight Sepulchre, things will never be the same for the Guild. As time passed, our luck would diminish to the point of non-existence. And whether you know it or not, our uncanny luck defines our trade. Very true. In our line of work, it's quite rare we set out to return a stolen item to its rightful owner. Before we depart, Brynjolf has some business to discuss. I suggest you listen to him. Listen, lass. There's one last piece of business we need to settle before we go after Mercer. The leadership of the guild. Listen, lass. There's one last piece of business we need to settle before we go after Mercer. The leadership of the guild. Carlia and I had a long discussion before you arrived here. Thanks to your efforts, Mercer's treachery has been exposed. After we deal with him, all that remains is restoring the guild to its full strength. As a result, we both feel that you have the potential of replacing Mercer as leader of the Thieves' Guild. I've been at this game a long time, my friend. A long time. I've stolen trinkets from nobles and framed priests for murder. I'm good at what I do, maybe even one of the best, but it's all I know. I've never been one to lead, never desired it, never cared for it, don't want it. Well, we have a bit of an errand to run before your coronation, so don't get sentimental on me now. Then it's decided. When this is all over and Delvin's contacts assure me that we've regained our footing in Skyrim, we'll handle the details. Until then, we have quite the task ahead. I've been poring over the plans you brought us, and I'm convinced the eyes of the Falma are in the Dwarven ruins at Urkenthand. Carlia and I will meet you there. Prepare yourself, lass. This will be a fight to remember. If you would have asked me that yesterday, I'd have said no. But now I think our chances have improved. Look, call me crazy if you like, but I trust Kalaya. I don't think she'd lead us down a suicidal path. Besides, I'd rather die with some of Mercer's blood on my blade than spend the rest of my life regretting that I ran the other way. Aye, and some of what Kalaya said is starting to make sense. Mercer may have damaged our reputation and raided our coffers, but this goes well beyond even his twisted form of larceny. Old Delvin kept calling it a curse, and we all laughed at him. Looks like the joke's on us. With the skeleton key missing from the Twilight Sepulchre, 
I'm afraid Mercer's seen to it that none of us can benefit from Nocturnal's gifts. You merely transacted the oath, signed the unwritten contract with Nocturnal. In order for us to receive our abilities, our end of the bargain, I'm afraid the key must be returned. If Nocturnal was truly displeased with me, with any of us, she wouldn't have answered my call. I have no doubt that we still hold her favor, and I believe it gives us enough of an edge to defeat Mercer Frey. Yes. Now that you're a Nightingale, you may consider this your home. You'll find that this place offers many things that will help you in your endeavors, as well as a wealth of information for you to learn. Once the Skeleton Key has been restored to the Twilight Sepulcher, I'll make this place my home as well.
Mercer's been here. I hope we aren't too late. Brynjolf and I found them like that. Mercer's doing. We have to catch up to him before it's too late. We should tread carefully. I wouldn't be surprised if he's left behind a few surprises for us.
this is what we heard. The entire tower has <sighs> Mercer was able to knock this thing down. Centurion. Very tough and very deadly. We can take the beast on or sneak around. It's your call, lass. We're right behind you.
must be getting close. must be their heart. must have inflicted. The dwarves were a cruel race. we get to Mercer. Aye. Whatever you want to do, we're with you.
And he hasn't seen us yet. Bernie, watch the door. I must. Nothing's getting by me. Climb down that ledge. See if you can... Carlia, when will you learn you can't get the drop on me? I could feel a sudden shift in the wind. And at that moment, I knew it would end with one of us at the end of a blade. What's Carlia been filling your head with? Tales of thieves with honor? Oaths ripe with falsehoods and broken promises? Nocturnal doesn't care about you, the key, or anything having to do with the guild. Then it appears the shadows shroud more than your presence. They blind your wisdom as well. Our actions have always been one and the same. Both of us lie, cheat, and steal to further our own end. It's clear you'll never see the skeleton key as I do, as an instrument of limitless wealth. Instead, you've chosen to fall over your own foolish code. Then the die is cast, and once again, my blade will taste Nightingale blood! Carlisle, I'll deal with you after I rid myself of your irksome companions. In the meantime, perhaps you and Brynjolf should get better acquainted. What? Oh. I can't stop myself! Sorry, lass. I've got important things to do. We'll speak another time. I can't believe it's over. Twenty-five years in exile, and just like that, it's done. All that remains is to ensure the safe return of the Skeleton Key. I'm afraid it's not that simple. 
When the skeleton key was stolen from the Twilight Sepulchre, our access to the Inner Sanctum was removed. The only way to bring it back will be through the Pilgrim's Path. It wasn't created for the Nightingales. It was created to test those who wish to serve Nocturnal in other ways. As a consequence, I have no knowledge of what you'll be facing. Brynjolf is needed back at the Thieves' Guild to keep order while you're away. And I... I can't bear to face Nocturnal after my failure to protect the key. I'm afraid you'll have to face the end of your journey alone. Take this with you. I'm not certain if it will help within the walls of the Sepulchre, but I certainly don't need it as much as you. I've had this bow almost my entire life, and it's never let me down. I hope it brings you the same luck.